I know there is, but Troy or Shannon, please elaborate. Shannon, I'll let you take a first shot. Okay, so um, the golf professionals and I met towards the end of last year to uh, take a swing at the issues that we were having with um, no shows and cancellations. And we felt that it was in the best interest of the golf courses to only allow one tee time being booked online to help the golf professionals manage their tee sheet more efficiently and to try to eliminate those um, no shows because we had a lot of situations where people were booking two tee times back to back and only needing that one tee time. So they made the decision to move forward with only allowing uh, one tee time being booked online and preferred that golfers called into the clubhouse to book more than one. Colin, how do you feel about that, Scott? Steve? Is that a helpful tactic for you guys? Well, Eddie, with the with the problems that we were having, people booking three, four, and five tee times, I mean, whether they did it intentionally or whether they didn't do it intentionally, I mean, we were losing revenue because they'd show up with, they'd book four tee times for 20, 20 players and show up with five or six. So we lost the opportunity to capitalize on green fee and cart revenue plus the add-on based on the fact that they didn't notify us. I mean, I know Kent personally, and yes, I mean, he might be do his due diligence and call, but he's probably in the 1%. Yeah, and that's a good point. Yeah, I would echo those thoughts. We were having, um, mainly the change in policy was we were having so many issues with big groups booking and um, only showing up for one tea time or maybe not at all. So we kind of limited they wanted the two together. They were going to have to book one online or call into the shop to uh, make their tea times. And I'm on the same page with those guys. You guys are good the way it is right now. Uh, so yeah, I'm good with the current policy. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, if you guys are saying it's only 1% of the golfing population, then I don't see a reason to, to change it right now. Um, I hope Kent understands that. That's, that's it for public comments. Uh, approval of minutes. Uh, there's not a written uh, transcript for the February 3rd meeting, but as always, you can log on to YouTube. Um, with the URL provided in the agenda. New items, hiring strategy. All right, so now we got a green light to do what we need to be doing uh, to operate our golf courses. So we have several vacancies and uh, yesterday we started uh, going through the process of making the requisitions to fill those positions. We had a staff meeting yesterday, uh, talked to the staff a little bit about it. Um, I do believe we have seven positions that we are going to post and try to get filled. One in particular, though, that's really uh, interesting to me is the division manager for um, uh, for the golf division. And you know, I talked to a couple of my uh, colleagues from across the country, and there actually is a recruitment company or co several companies that actually go out and recruit. Uh, this type of a position and I, you know, I think just going through our normal process of posting on our own in-house uh, website and then reaching out on some of the other uh, job boards probably won't get us uh, you know we'll get us some folks but I think a smart option might be to actually hire a recruiter to see what we can do in regards to uh, doing a national search to find some some of the best people that we can interview. Now, I do think we have some great folks in house. Um, I think some of the folks that we have in house could definitely compete, and there's a good reason why. Now, obviously, they know our our system, they know uh, the courses, they know our clientele, 
and I would really encourage um, anybody from our staff to apply for the job. Um, I'm still researching to see if that's even something we can do is to get get a recruiter, but um, it's a possibility and um, just an option that I want to look at. And so I was wondering if you, uh, the Golf Advisory Committee, has any thoughts or comments on that? Um, that way I can say that with our HR department. This recruiting firm is an outside entity. Yeah, you know, we, there's recruiting firms for all kinds of different uh, industries and there is and, and there's several not just one but I think there's several different um, recruitment companies that go out and try to find um, qualified people for this position so well, I hope they're not from Chicago no I, I doubt it <laughs> Mike That's what I was going to say. Like, I, I mean, if we're going to use uh, bet on ourselves as a city to do this the right way, then we might as well um, find the most effective, uh, qualified, appropriate candidate. So if our outside recruiting firm is that, why would we not do it? If the regular job posting board is that, why would we not do it? If it's somebody internal already, why would we not do it wherever it comes from? As long as they're the most qualified person, I don't think the channel they're found in um, is what matters. It's just that that's what we're seeking out. You know, we had, there's a lot of opportunities here for uh, some transparency and kind of relieves any kind of um, Oh, I don't know. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we can have somebody to actually evaluate those criteria. Um, so it's just an option. Um, just I'm not saying we will do it or can do it or should do it. I just was curious as to what the Golf Advisory Committee thought. The Honorable Niall Gilmore. Oh, Eddie. Thank you. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm all in favor of that. I think that's uh, uh, definitely the way we need to go. We need to find the best qualified, somebody that can uh, bring the, uh, not only just the experience of golf, but um, somebody who uh, uh, has the uh, marketing, finance, enterprise, and then understands all aspects of uh, facilities, grounds, communications, everything that's going to be required of this position. And just as a point of reference, I wasn't sure I heard Troy right. Troy, are you thinking that this position um, should be a um, uh, it should be a, um, uh, a director position um, change, to change the job description to a department director level in order to attract the necessary skills. Is that what you had in mind? No, it would still be a division manager. And um, I have a division manager for uh, parks and it's a pretty substantial job. Uh, the division manager for recreation, a very substantial job. So um, that's kind of where we're, we're looking at. Um, but I think there's a lot of opportunity to look at the salary. And the salary, I think, is one of those things that really helps bring in the right folks. And if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think this category actually levels out at the very top end at about 140, 145,000. So, um, you know, there's some some space there to negotiate with that, but that would, um, you know, that, that's, it's all to be uh, discussed in regards to negotiation with whoever we hire and uh, um, who is uh, recommended to be hired. So, okay. And then, um, so that's just the recruitment to see what kind of candidates we could bring on board. 
Um, then the next step is actually hosting interviews. And what we've typically done is for a position at this level is have somebody from the park board on the committee, somebody from the golf advisory committee on the hiring committee. Um, and uh, sometimes we have to actually have other stakeholders uh, involved as well. So it's not too soon to start thinking about a selection committee for this, for a group of candidates, uh, whether they're internal or local or from across the country, you know, we, we can figure out how to get them here or do Zoom calls like this. Um, but I'd like to start thinking about already uh, thinking ahead of time who we'd want on the selection committee. But before we do that, um, I just wanted to get so I could take this to the city manager as well as the HR department. Um, if you guys make the recommendation, if I could have a motion of using a, uh, a the suggestion of using a uh, recruiting company to help us find as many candidates that would be qualified as we can, that would be helpful. I'd be glad to make that motion. In a motion and a second. Does that mean to the yes. second? Further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. All right. Now, in regards to uh, the selection committee, um, as I mentioned, somebody from the park board, somebody from the golf advisory committee, um, maybe somebody from uh, the general stakeholder group of golfing community. Uh, so maybe we start off with three. And then we typically have uh, somebody from the Parks and Recreation Department, uh, somebody from the Law Department um, on, on this kind of a level of position, and uh, somebody from HR, um, and maybe somebody from the city manager's office as well. Uh, so it's pretty broad, but I'm looking for some um, diversity in the committee and if you guys have any suggestions I'd like to get them down on paper now so I can pursue them and uh, see if we could get them to make a commitment to being on the committee. Wow. Uh, thank you Eddie. Uh, I, I guess my first question is how soon um, do you think you'd be able to move on uh, bringing in the uh, the recruitment and the recruitment side of it. I mean, getting this posted with a national search. So we're going to try to post the position uh, next week and we'll still post it either way. Either right. way, I'm going to still have it posted. Um, I have a meeting with HR next week on Wednesday to see if we can start uh, lining up a recruitment company. And that would probably take a good two or three weeks, maybe four weeks of recruitment and um, you know, it, it's tough because I really want to get somebody in here as soon sure. as possible. I, I understand. So I was just trying to get a general idea and a, yeah. a month is, is sounded good. Now, the other question I had is you, you want to get park board, you want to get GAC, and you wanted to get stakeholders. I want to get an idea of uh, how you're going to go about finding that specifically stakeholders, who that, who that who you picture that might be. I, I'm asking you guys to see uh, who you guys feel would best fill that position or those seats. You know, it could be one or two, I would imagine. Um, you know, somebody that represents the golf community or uses the golf courses quite a bit. Um, we definitely, one of the things that's really important is looking at diversity within the, the committee so obviously I need to have uh, at least one female. I would rather have a couple. Um, and it would be great to have somebody who represents the minority community as well that plays golf. So, um, yeah, there, there's, there's. So I'd ask, I'd, I would ask the pros, do you have uh, anybody in mind from your uh, men's clubs and uh, women's clubs? or your leagues um, that you could draw from, that you think you could draw from 
um, to get where Troy's wanting to go with that. I definitely think I could um, talk with my men's club, either my men's club president or one of the guy, one of the regulars that uh, possibly be interested in sitting on that committee. I don't have a ladies' club, so um, maybe Colin or um, Scott might be interested in getting somebody from that club. I can talk to the ladies on Tuesday and uh, see if anyone's interested. Okay. Well, it looks like Nancy's uh, interested, and in I was hoping that would be the case, so I appreciate that. Um, one of the other items that I thought, or another groups I thought might fit that would be the McAdams golf group. Um, they're the group of African Americans that play basically all the courses, but um, so that might, that might be an option. I could reach out to them and see if that would be somebody who would uh, want to send a representative for that. All right. Super. That sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Do you want, do you want a, a formal recommendation for that too? Uh, Eddie, or just uh, something we can do as we move forward? I think this one is, is uh, we, I don't think we need a formal recommendation, but as you have some names in mind, uh, definitely send them my way. And more than likely, we'll have another golf advisory committee meeting prior to uh, any candidates being um, interviewed so I can give you guys a little bit more information about the makeup of the committee. Anything else on that? Project updates. All right, well, um, my favorite project over at McDonald, uh, the project that never wants to start is actually, I think we're getting close to getting a start date. So, um, I think Ron's on the call, Mr. Reese. If you could give a quick update, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Uh, yeah, the contract was awarded to Don Langer. Uh, in the rounds report, there's a little bit of info. Some some was left out when this was uh, printed up, but uh, we're going to be fixing the bridge on number 12, uh, replacing the bridge on 17. Uh, then all the dam and overflow structures will be rebuilt uh, over the years. Yeah, they just weren't built right when it was redone in the 90s. Over the years, uh, pipes have rusted out. They're going to go to corrugated plastic that will never rust. It's very heavy duty. It was spec by the uh, engineers. Uh, met with a couple engineers from the city. We're out on Monday, and the one that will be uh, overseeing the project from the city engineering department. Uh, we toured it and we've emailed back and forth a couple times since then. So uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, I guess next city council meeting is when the contract is officially approved. So uh, just waiting on that and then hopefully uh, the materials they need as far as the piping will not uh, be a big delay. So just we'll just see. and. Best case scenario would have this been done in November, December, but uh, it's it's need to be done when it's finished. It will uh, help us with water re water retention for irrigation, uh, which will, you know, help us save having to buy city water, which is a uh, cost going up five percent every year. So it's a uh, it's more than tripled in my 14 years at McDonald. When I came there, the price of city water was 212 per thousand gallons. This year it's going to be about seven dollars and ten cents per thousand gallons. So, you know, we don't have any less area to irrigate. It just cost a heck of a lot more money. So uh, excited to get that done. The contractors that are removing dead trees are currently working. Uh, hopefully another week or two they'll be finished up with that. Uh, also, we've been approved to do some more uh, replacement of, uh, of parts on the irrigation pump system. So uh, when the next phase is done, basically we have a, a brand new pump station 
for approximately one hundred and forty thousand uh, dollars with a company called Sargent Drilling. Uh, most companies that do these type of pump stations for golf course capacity pumping uh, would be looking at three hundred thousand dollars and on up. So uh, by using this company who does have the expertise, they they do all the uh, work in house, all the manufacturing of the parts in house. So uh, so that's so it'll be good to get that done. It'll be nice to not wake up at two o'clock in the morning and wonder if the irrigation pumps are running or if the get there in the morning and everything's dry. So uh, that's about it for McDonald. Uh, looking forward to a good season. Spoke with uh, Corey at first tee. Uh, they're not as close as what they would hope getting the building built. When that'll when that's done, uh, there will be another eight. Uh, artificial hitting pads that will that will definitely help us in the winter time uh, we'll overseeded the driving range tee which is bermuda last fall so with rye grass so hopefully opening up the grass tee earlier this year than we have before so that will help with the revenue also by allowing more people to be on the tee box so that's about it any questions that's it My, my question was back. Nancy, we can't hear you. <laughs> if you would like, Nancy, you could. Uh, she's muted now. Oh, she's. Yeah, you're muted now. Uh, but even before you're muted, we couldn't hear it very well at all. Uh, but worst case scenarios, you can type it in. Yeah, that's what I've done. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yep. I don't know what the difference was. OK, what were the other six positions that are being posted? I'm sorry. I, what, yeah. So we have uh, one of the greenskeepers. Um, I think we have two assistant uh, golf professionals. Um, we have the, the golf professional over at SIM. Um, I do believe we have um, one of the superintendents. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah, the food and beverage slash um, uh, administrative position. Yeah. Yeah. And Troy, one assistant superintendent at Texan Solver. Yeah. Any, any questions on the project updates? All right. Thanks, Ron. All right. Um, let's see. Steve, um, do you want to give any updates to? I think you guys have some irrigation work over at Tex, and I think you guys finished out all your other. Clubhouse stuff as well, I think, right? Yeah, correct. Uh, got the roof is finally all completed. Um, my commercial AC units have been put in. Uh, we'll benefit from that here this spring. Um, Seth had some work also done on his uh, pump station to get it up and, and going. All those have been completed. Okay. All right. Uh, we've also been doing some upgrades. Uh, I think over um, at Auburn Hills. I think we're waiting for some more parts to finish the upgrades of the irrigation pump system out there. Is uh, Mosier on the call? He is not. Okay. No, but Troy, yeah, with talking with him yesterday, yeah, he's hoping to have the, they'll be there next week to get the pumps reinstalled. Uh, is is what he's hoping for, and that's what the company is hoping for. Yeah, and also today the technician from Sergeant Drilling was uh, at SIM today to get everything programmed on the uh, the VFD system to program it so it can be up and running. So, so all four golf courses had major upgrades, repairs to their irrigation pumps and irrigation system. So yep. electrical. Um, yeah, just spent some money. 
and um, I think over at Sim we're still also still doing some tree removal as well. I think they're actually there today doing some work. So yeah. yeah, and I think they still need to go to Tex Consolidate too. The crew that's at McDonald when they get finished there, they I think they're the crew that's going to Tex. Yeah. Okay. All right. So things are actually moving. We're getting a lot done. Okay. That, that covers that item. Equipment repair and replacement. <clears throat> so the clubhouses. We've been having some major issues with all of our heating at our clubhouses. And I think uh, at least two out of the four clubhouses have had some major heating repairs to keep everybody warm in the clubhouses and keep the pipes from freezing. So some more upgrades and repairs have been uh, happening in the past couple weeks. Any questions on that? Keep people warm. Yeah. Please. So prior to, um, well, I don't even know when, when to start, but prior to a lot of this discussion in regards to Kemper and First Tee and, and all those things, um, we've always talked about bringing back to the subject in regards to addressing some of the fees for uh, the passes as well as uh, increasing the fees for some of the carts and what I'd really would suggest is especially for the carts what's worked really well for the, um, the mowing equipment is we have a surcharge that we put on and that money goes directly into a replacement fund for replacing the mowers and that's how we were able to get uh, some mowing equipment last year and um, so I, I think that's a great model to use for the golf carts and if we do end up increasing the fees for the golf carts I would suggest that that money goes directly into a replacement fund for golf carts so we can have uh, continuous funding in there to replace the golf carts and uh, whether it's uh, 100 golf carts a year or 50 or whatnot, there's always an opportunity to keep the golf carts fresh. So, um, so I would be interested to see um, what those fees are so we can take that the sooner the better to council as well as to um, park board and as I, I saw an email from Mr. Shordorf, um, you know, those, those things I think are, are things that have been discussed and, and probably needs to be done because we have an opportunity to make a little bit of money. Um, obviously, we want to make sure everything is affordable, but uh, I'd be interested in seeing what the board, the golf, I'm sorry, the golf advisory committee uh, would like to give direction on. <clears throat> Any comments on that? And if no fees are to be entertained, uh, that, that that's something I would like to get that direction on as well. Nancy. Oh, better. Oh, better. What? Um, my question is, I, I, is there a separate, just be one dollar, or do they add on something and then your receipt will say X number of dollars go to cart rental or? Okay. Yeah, that's the way we have a fund uh, from the. Um, the uh, greens fees, that there's a, a separate fund that goes to a replacement fund for all of our equipment. You could do the same thing with the golf carts, is say it's X amount of dollars, but the increase is a dollar, and that one dollar goes to the replacement fund. And so we could keep that, uh, that fund growing. It costs $20. Okay, she has answered her own comments. That's, so Santa, yeah, that's, 
that's the question. I, I think I might ask the same question. It, what is that amount now? If, if nothing changes, what is that amount now that goes towards the cart replacement from a standard green? There's nothing. So, so anything we propose would be that number that would thus go into this replacement fund. Correct. How, how do we pay for the golf cart replacements without the fund at present? We buy, they borrow and steal. So this is a no brainer. Um, <laughs> I hope I have a brain because I, I'm making the suggestion, but. <laughs> <laughs> matter of matter of expression. <laughs> um, I, look, if we need new carts uh, and we got to beg, borrow, and steal at the way it's operating at present, and the carts are in a position where they either need maintenance or aren't working, then the economics of it tells me we need to talk about an increase and figure out what the rounds totals played per year are, and what that dollar amount should be, and how many cart rentals there are, and uh figure out how we get to the number we need to to get to those 100 carts a year what's the yeah, math there's, there's a lot of different ways to peel that onion and uh, when we i think it's been four years ago that we replaced the golf carts it goes by fast i can't believe it's been and we, and we replaced them with the uh, uh the gas golf carts and, and they've been doing great and they probably have a lifespan of uh 10 to 12 years um in that case, we add two more years to that because we really make everything stretch out really far. But coming up with a strategy um, and, and being very strategic in regards to not just our mowing equipment, but also the carts, putting a, a system so we can put it in in regards to replacing the carts. Um, the way we were able to replace the carts last time is that we used excess dollars from capital projects and we used um, general fund dollars from parks and recreation. So I had to use dollars from other parks and recreation funding to uh, make that deal happen. And we were able to also sell the old battery carts um, as a trade-in. And so we were somewhere in the neighborhood of just over a million dollars from what I remember uh, to make that replacement. And then you would just sit down. Um, exactly what you're, you're talking about, Michael, is um, maybe it's you spread it over seven eight years how do we get that replacement cost and put that into a replacement fund so. what uh Troy, just for some context i'm i'm just i'm just literally doing napkin math right here what's the per unit how much does it cost us to buy a new cart ballpark um i'm sure it's changed uh but somewhere between depending on you can put in all kinds of amenities on it as well uh, if I remember right, I'm guessing, uh, and this is a guess, between three and 5,000, if I remember okay. right. Yeah. Let's just call it four grand. Um, Canada, do you remember, do you have the total rounds number for all four courses for 2021? Well, Michael, since you asked, I just ran that report, and uh, we actually with all of the cart rentals totaled in 2021, there was 112,156, which generated $1.26 million in revenue. And that's, and just, that's just cart paid rounds. That's not green fee rounds. Correct. That is just cart rentals. And that, that would be 18 hole half cart, 18 hole full cart, nine hole nine hole half cart uh that would also include any beverage carts that were rented for uh tournaments and any spectator carts for events where uh spectators watched what about total rounds played carts and walkers included that i can tell you like total rounds played yeah. For 2021, uh, 178,000. Let me get you the exact number. But to touch on what Troy said, I believe we purchased 240 golf carts in 2018, and it was approximately 
$4,800 per cart. We did get some money on trade-ins, but I will tell you, I was recently pricing golf carts, and not only is there a shortage, but I didn't find a single one less than $7,000. Yeah, that's not surprising. So call it seven grand. Okay. And then yeah, if you whenever you get that number on total rounds, I think that at least able, enables us to start having a conversation rooted in the financial in the math of it. I think where there's there's an option out there. I know uh Shawnee County, Topeka, their three golf courses, they do a lease of the Yamaha, the same golf carts we have. Oh. And they do a three-year lease. Uh, I don't know what it cost. I could get a hold of Carrie and, and find out. Uh, just to you know, have a comparison number. If uh, if maybe leasing would be a viable option to where you're turning over and you know you get new carts every three years. They also do that at Quill Ridge and Winfield, a three-year lease on those. Yeah. Which is a um, and and that's the same. Uh, philosophy is that that um, cart replacement fund would pay the leasing costs. So it doesn't really matter whether you're buying or leasing. Uh, the replacement fund would take care of that. Yeah, uh, that endeavor. Right. Yeah, we just have to compare if if leasing is better off financially than purchasing, which. Usually purchasing is better, but you never know until you really look at the numbers. Nancy has asked, how many carts does the system have at this time? We have 69 at plus uh, a few that aren't working. Nancy, when we made that purchase in 2018, with the new carts, I think at that time total we had 315. But we have increased inventory at McDonald and at Sim. And we couldn't do any more at Tex Consolver or Arburn Hills just because of storage issues. Richard? Yes, thank you. Um, at one point, we also did a uh, an analyzation at uh, for uh, the uh, cart rentals at uh, uh, our competition, and um, I think that that should also uh, be going into the uh, into the rationale uh, because of my memory was that we are uh, below uh, what other. Uh, Courses uh, charge in the area, and um, um, on the same thing on the uh, looking at the uh, uh, increase in uh, you know, we don't have passes in the memberships. I think that we uh, the increase that we are we're talking about at one point. I don't know if that's what we want to use, um, but at some point. Um, there is a substantial benefit, uh, and I'm, I'm sure Mark still has it. Mark Manny, uh, when we first started the uh, the system for the memberships, he calculated the amount, the fifty-five dollar amount for seniors, as just a transfer over from the uh, pass system. Now the pass is were much more limited and the goal was to transfer them over without any sticker shock and then point out the the advantages and the um, um, the benefits of, of having the uh, the membership so i think that, that has to also go into the calculation uh not that we're trying to drive anyone off but at the same time whatever number that we come to as far as raising uh, we we want to be extremely affordable but we also want to make sure that um, the the uh, amounts we're charging are um, 
reasonable, and I, I think getting um, uh, finance involved, uh, they they do wonderful wonders with numbers. That they do. Uh, Nile. Uh, you know, I was just pulling up uh, that report that uh, Richard was just referring to, and it had the um, um, cart rental comparisons. Um, that uh, looks to me like, uh, you know, we've been on the low end of that. When you compare Cherry Oaks and Heston, Sand Creek, Wellington, all those, um, we're uh, we're kind of on the on the low end of that. It looks like we're 16 and 20, uh, 20 dollars for a, a cart. Um, this is back in September. It looks like sixteen dollars, um, whereas uh, the highest was uh, Sand Creek at twenty-six, and uh, most of the others were in the fifteen to seventeen dollar uh, range. So, um, you know, traditionally we've been on the low end of that as far as the uh, that that particular aspect goes, but if you've got a lifespan that you're looking at, Troy, you said that you would expect to turn the fleet over in about eight years. Um, so I think uh, uh, we just needed to to take that eight year lifespan where what four years into that and uh, take our number of cart usages and divide that by that that number per cart and then compare that to leasing uh, it sounds like something that uh, finance could probably do for us um, before our next meeting well i see what they can come up with yeah I think Michael was on the right track with his his uh, uh, what would you call that uh, napkin calculations or uh, yeah there it is uh, <laughs> I think he's on the right track with that by taking taking the number uh, but I really I'm not sure we really want to charge walkers uh, a surcharge for for uh, fee for cart replacement I think that's I I agree I think what my intent was, or what I was trying to describe, is if you rent a cart, um, there's a surcharge on it for replacement of the carts that would go yeah. into the replacement fund. I think that'd be more appropriate than just over your total rounds. But well, if history has told us anything, ten years ago we went through this similar process. Obviously, we've been in the news quite a bit in the past couple of weeks. Um, I think now would be a good time to to look at that. Um, I think 2013 was a tremendous year, uh, probably our last tremendous year before the uh, COVID pandemic. Um, so if we're going to capitalize on this, now would be a time. I don't know what that number looks like, whether it's $1, $2, $5. I don't know. That's for finance to come up with. And maybe they can give us a few options so that we can look at it and say, uh, we want to go with this option as opposed to this option, whatever. Um, but certainly, I think we need to capitalize on this this surge that I think we're going to see. And if the weather continues to stay um, the way it has been uh, this week, um, you know, we're looking at another good year. Yeah, it's a tough. There's two options that we're looking at. Or, or, I'm sorry, not options. Two areas we're looking at, and one of them is. Um, the uh, memberships, but also the other one is the golf cart. And I think the golf cart discussion is the easiest one to address. And if and when I take this to council, I would like to take them both to council at the same time. Um, but I think uh, I don't want, and this is really delicate because I, 
I don't want to go charging and saying, hey, we're going to increase all of our fees. And everybody's just going to freak out. But if we don't take advantage of our summer months, we could lose out on some, some good revenue that I think we deserve. I, I think there's capacity for that revenue. So um, what I'm going to do, I'll sit down with uh, somebody from finance, see if we could get a good proposal to come back to the golf advisory committee for the next meeting. That will include um, golf carts, and, and that would, and if you guys feel good about that, that it would go into the uh, uh, replacement fund, and then going back to the report that um, Niles has mentioned, as well as Mr. Shordorf mentioned, to see if we could come up with a proposal for um, some small upgrades or increases in the uh, membership costs or membership fees. So if you guys can. Uh, if you think that's appropriate, if you can uh, give me uh, some kind of direction, some kind of direction. I think you should go for it. We need to find out. We need need to sit down and figure out what your annual budget's going to be, uh, what you expect rounds to be, and price it accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, Nancy made a good point. I, I don't think it's the uh, any change on the uh, greens fees, but the membership price would be something to look at. So I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. I agree, Nancy. Yes, if that's okay. All right. So next <coughs> meeting, I'll bring uh, some options to look at. But if you guys can give me a motion or something. <laughs> Somebody want to make a motion? Honorable Nile. Oh, I'll make a motion, mute, sir. Mo motion to increase or request an increase in green fees or in our fee. Second. Got a motion and a second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Opposed? Aye. Motion passed unanimously. All right. Boy, we're getting lots of good business going on. I like this. OK, just wanted you guys to make you aware that um, we did have a situation where the golf pros contracts lapsed. Uh, I didn't want to uh, go into that direction until we knew exactly what the outcome was from council meeting. So I'm going to be renewing uh, their contracts in regards to um, merchandise sales and if there's any concerns, I just want to see if there's any concerns before I move forward. But I am very excited. And one thing we talked about in yesterday's meeting is that now that we know what direction we're going, it's time to sell merchandise. And the more they sell, the better it is for them and the better it is for the golf courses. And um, so I, I'm excited that they're going to have that opportunity. But I just want to make sure uh, you guys feel comfortable with that, and, and if I could get a motion on that as well, that would be great. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. My only uh, discussion was to ask the pros to find, to, to be able to purchase golf balls that don't get lost. <laughs> they should track that. <laughs> Richard, that won't help. You know that. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All, right. All opposed? Motion passes. All right. I don't have a, a up to date financial report, but one of the things that was really kind of interesting, um, and maybe this might be too much in the weeds, but what we do is we have our point of sale system um, that does all, all the day to day sales on the computer there at each one of the golf courses and, and we and really kind of carries a lot of the different revenues. Um, and then we actually have what's called Munis, which is our finance department and accounting department. Um, uh, uh, I guess they, they their records of, of how they bring in all the revenues. And so I have two different systems that the uh, the point of sale falls into what's called munis 
and then I get reports from there. What I'm going to start doing is having a Munis report. Um, Santa came up with a, a really great report working with the folks in finance, and we can break it down uh, monthly to see exactly where we are in regards to uh, percentage of the year where we are in regards to expenses as well as in revenues. So we can really kind of follow that really closely. So starting next month, I will be bringing that as the financial report. Okay. Rounds. Are any questions on that before we move into the rounds report? Don't see any. Her All right, Apple Hans. All right, here. can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So looking at the uh, comparison from last year over this year, we see growth again. Uh, one of the trends that is sticking out to me very noticeably from the last four years is the continuous growth we're seeing at McDonald. And, you know, in, in the past years, there's always been a defined um, leader in rounds, which has always been text, followed by Sim, followed by Auburn, then Mac. And now we're seeing Mac is starting to get up there neck and neck with these other courses, which I think is a huge sign for us moving forward. And I'm really excited about, um, you know, everybody asks questions. Well, did this factor into that or did that? And I'm a firm believer that there's multiple things that factor into the outcomes of our golf division. And in this case, with looking at our rounds, I really think there's four things that have contributed over the last couple of years that have gotten us to where we're at right now. And um, the, the first one was closing clap because now our rounds are being shifted to four predominant locations where we're seeing consistency, our membership subscription model. Uh, and my personal favorite is Jack the Goose Dog we've seen him come in and eliminate goose feces all over mcdonald golf course the course conditions have gotten so much better there and then finally the the COVID boom and, and everybody's aware of what that's done for golf um looking at month to month you know i get really excited for the last 12 months i've been generating this report for you guys and every month there's an increase from the previous month and out of the last 12 months there's only been one month where we have not seen an increase in rounds for the monthly comparison so i think that's really exciting and it just shows the hard work that's been happening out of the golf courses with the cart rentals again we're seeing a 25 percent increase across the board and i think a lot of that has to do with our memberships but also the amount of carts that we have available now in our fleet our staff has done a great job maintaining the carts keeping them running and troy has been fabulous about approving purchases to repair carts and a perfect example is keith out at mac came up with this great solution for the cart seats you know a lot of them had tears they they just weren't um nice to look at it was really an eyesore for a lot of golfers keith found seat covers that fit all of our golf carts for 25 dollars online and we were able to purchase one for every single cart in his fleet and now they look like brand new golf carts colin's taken that on as well and done that over at sim uh, i'm excited because scott and steve have been working with our yamaha dealer to find out how we can get the seats repaired that have just plain chunks missing in the seat you know so all four of these guys working together along with troy approving purchases it's just been a really positive outcome because we're saving money with the seat covers but we're making those purchases for the repairs that we need um with f and b uh, again 45 percent growth from last year and you know this uh 6100 at auburn really jumped out at me and made me wonder uh what has happened over there for such a big increase 58 percent from the previous year and i did look at their uh 
reports and they hosted an event over a thousand dollars in revenue for FMB. So that explains the jump there. But we are seeing growth across the board at every location. And I, I think uh, one of the reasons that we're also seeing the growth is that this time last year we had 200 less members than what we currently have right now. So I think that plays a part in it as well. Um, let's see here the monthly membership comparison so we're at the point now where we're seeing consistency with the amount of members that we have we're we're, we're fluctuating around the the 1430 range and just to share some past history with the season ticket model that we had where golfers paid an annual fee up front and then a copay every green fee. Um, we had just exceeded a thousand. Um, I believe it was in 2017. That number was pretty stagnant. We didn't see much fluctuation with that. And that I believe included our high school season ticket holders as well. So our goal going into the membership model was to exceed a thousand members the first year. We surpassed that and now we're staying in this 1430 range. And so what that says to me is we're pretty stable there right now. It's probably time that we look at moving our marketing efforts towards those golfers that are willing to pay a premium green fee on Saturdays and look at how we can retain them when this COVID boom starts to decline. I, I really think from a marketing standpoint, we've got to shift our focus to that now that we have the stability with our membership numbers. And driving range, we saw 24% growth and we saw a really big boom at Auburn Hills, 39% uh, from the previous year. So we're just under $10,000 in revenue for the first two months of the driving range, which is great considering that's usually what we're looking at about two and a half three months into the year and troy already shared the maintenance news with you guys so i won't go into that and obviously we had a lot of days the courses were closed in february but still to come out uh, ahead from the previous year like we did that's great i i can't say enough positive things about how the division looks right now going into 2022. I think Troy and uh, all of the pros and superintendents are doing a fantastic job. Kudos to the pros for the initiative on the uh, golf carts, uh, seat covers, and Troy for the expediency on his end. Um, Richard. Yes. Um one of the things that I'd like just to throw out what it's worth is uh, in order to look at the possibility of increasing uh, food and beverage, uh, we can either look at uh, making uh, changes to the, uh, the ability of the clubhouses to supply uh, food and beverage, or we could look at uh, purchasing carts that uh, would allow us to offer a full range of uh, of uh, food and beverage, including beer, which is the number one selling uh, item, I think, as far as margin goes. Um, and to um, try to figure out if we're going to do an investment in food and beverage, where the best return would be, uh, in, in including keeping uh, uh, the the rounds moving as far as uh, uh, not having people have to come in and, and stop if they can just get their uh, food and beverage on the uh, course. So is it possible to look at uh, you know some options there and, and see what it would cost to uh, uh, not only what it would cost to purchase a, you know like a food and beverage beverage cart and even if we just bought one or two and and then looked at our uh, our experience, but I think there's a plenty of of data out there for uh, other organizations, uh, other golf courses, and um, and and try to figure out where the investment is. I 
think if you get a good deal on a beverage cart, you just pull the trigger. Uh, we, we need them, especially in the hot times, the Friday afternoons, the Saturday mornings, Saturday afternoons, Sunday mornings throughout the summer. Absolutely crucial to have them out there. It's, a, it's free money. Um, you know, you're, you're paying the people that drive them. They're making most of their money in tips. Um, yeah, I, I think if you find a good deal, there's no reason to bring it back to us. I think Mr. Fry, Council Member Fry brought it up that there's too many layers in this current environment. And if you guys see a good deal on a beverage cart or something that can act as a beverage cart, get it out there as soon as possible. I agree. I think that's something we can definitely make happen. Um, so to Mr. Shortdorf, to answer part of your question, there's two, two parts that I want to answer. And I think there's some really low hanging fruit that we can take care of. Um, before, uh, I guess it was back in November, we had some really interesting discussions about our suppliers, supply chain in regards to food and beverage, uh, menus and, and those type of things. Um, so there, there's two parts that I want to answer this. I think the low hanging fruit, if we could just get um, golf carts or, or whatever it takes to turn them into uh, beer carts, uh, I, I don't think it needs to be anything fancy, but uh, <coughs> the golf pros probably know better than I do what, what would work to go out there and send, pe send people out there to go sell beer. Another big part of that too is just making sure we have uh, obviously somebody over 21 to go do that and um, and, and of course you have to go, have, go ahead and find that, that staff member. But one of the items that we're going to be, one of the positions that we're going to be hiring is to really kind of focus on food and beverage. And um, I don't want to get too far ahead until we hire that person to really um, manage all the courses to the fullest extent to really leverage everything and really streamline all of our food and beverage contracts so we can maximize our, our returns. So um, in that, that position, I don't think I need a, a really a national recruitment on it, but we can start looking as soon as I get it posted. I really want to get that position filled and hopefully we can get that in the next four to six weeks and then have that person really involved with a lot of these food and beverage uh, discussions as well as decisions. Uh, Shanna. So I just wanted to share um, something that I think is really exciting as far as our food and beverage goes is that um, now that a decision's been made which direction we're going, um, Troy and I have talked a lot about um, transitioning back to our credit card system being integrated with our software that we use in the clubhouses. And by doing that, it's going to give us the ability to turn on a feature in our mobile app that allows the golfers on the course to order FMB items in advance and it will be waiting for them when they get there in the clubhouse on the turn. They will have paid for it through the app and it will be a seamless process that not only I think is going to help generate uh, more FMB revenue, but it's also going to help improve the pace of play when golfers are making the turn. So that's something I'm really excited about. And just to kind of give you some numbers, because I know uh, Michael likes to crunch numbers. We have uh, 21,000 uh, people that have downloaded our mobile app. OK, and it, it is a commodity that is really a diamond in the rough that we can use on our courses that uh, other courses in the surrounding areas don't take advantage of. I know there is one other location that has a mobile app, but uh, they don't use the robust operating features that are in there like we do. So I, I'm really excited about this year and what we're going to see with that. And when we get the food and beverage manager, uh, that person will get all these great tools to, to work with the staff. I'm excited about that. Are we able to do the, the app deal like right now? Well, we, we utilize our app, but what our drawback is right now is I think it was three, four, five years ago, maybe we transitioned from having the credit cards integrated to standalone credit card terminals. Um, there was a little bit of savings that we saw there, um, but 
it, it, it did some things to hinder us really more than help us. So that's why we definitely want to transition back. But we, we do have to purchase new equipment for the credit card terminals. And um, we, we have to do uh, some things with finance to make that all happen. But it's something that we have been looking at for the last two and a half years. But we just didn't want to pull that trigger till we knew which way we were going. Sure. Is that something that we can have in place by May 1st? Integrate the app and the credit card deal. So that people can order their food off the app. We can surely try. I I can't promise anything, Eddie, because I work oh, in government, okay. but I, I can sure try. Sure. I think it'd be great to, to have for this summer. Michael. Hey, my hand's raised for an unrelated reason. I have to run is why, um, but I wanted to bring this up and Troy, it doesn't have to be addressed here. Um, I would just like some further information. Um, I, in the past, had went out to Mac Park and asked to volunteer my time to do little things, go pick up trash, try and clean up, you know, waste around the pond, just, just put a little bit of effort into, into the place to do volunteerism type work to, to maybe help it out a little bit. And uh, each time I did that in the clubhouse was, was told, you know, we don't allow people to do that or there's a liability issue or, or for lack of a better term, thanks, but no thanks. Um, I'm still willing to do that. And I would be curious to know like what it takes to either do that individually or put a group of people together and, and just try and clean up some places. I'm sure Sim, I'm sure Tex, I'm sure Auburn um, also have some some areas of opportunity to do something like that. I, I don't know what that process looks like. If you can email it to me or send some info or bring it up next month, I'd just be curious to know how to make something like that happen. Well, first of all, let me clear something up. Um, it's definitely doable and we have done in the past, uh, not only in the golf cart or golf courses, but also in the parks. So it's it definitely can be done. Now this does, it does take some effort to make uh, the arrangements and the logistics behind it. Uh, but it's something that I really wanted to see. We, we've talked about having uh, specific volunteer days. We've talked about that and we've actually executed that once before. Uh, Apple Hans was fortunate enough to uh, put, a, put a group together and, and they had a great volunteer day uh, doing exactly what you're talking about. Um, and, and something that I was really wanting to see is seeing more of our golfers really uh, give back into our courses. And if we set up specific volunteer days for that to happen, um, it, it would greatly reduce our, our overhead costs in regards to some of the maintenance that needs to be done, uh, addressing some of the, the concerns that always pops up in regards to um, just the unsightly, unsightliness of some of the items in our, in our golf courses. So um, I'll send you something. Um, but it's something that definitely can be done. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you're interested in it. Uh, we've had, like I said, some small interest in it in the past. Uh, but when we have asked for volunteers in the past, it's been really uh, not well received. And I, I think um, having the, a strong commitment from uh, the Golf Advisory Committee to really kind of help promote it would be a huge help. Um, as well as you know, just some of our other uh, golfing community stakeholders, some of the other clubs that, that play. Maybe they have specific days where they have volunteer days um, for, from each one of the clubs that play at our, our golf courses. Uh, and again, I'm excited to get these new positions on board because I think the new uh, uh, division manager or some of their administrative support can make that happen. Uh, that would be something I'd really want to see them do. Yeah, um, look, I have to run. I mean, yeah. Troy, I'm, I'm disappointed with how Monday went. I think that was a, a shot in the side of the future of our municipal golf courses, but I won't be a hypocrite either if I can be a resource and leverage my resources um, from my relationships in the community. I'm happy to help make it happen. Just uh, please share some information. Okay. 
Michael, thanks, if you can guys. spontaneous on just popping over there, tell them your boys are Troy and pick me up on the way. I'll bring you a case of water. <laughs> Noted. You're the man. See you guys. See you, Michael. Uh, Shanna? So I just wanted everybody to see the uh, web page that we have set up for volunteers on our website and the superintendents were so awesome last uh, year. They set up uh, one monthly uh, day at their courses for volunteers and we stopped it during the off season and we're going to be picking that back up again. And we had almost 20 people show up to our very first one at McDonald in July. And then the numbers did start to decline, but I think we're going to see a lot more people this spring. So I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware. We do take volunteers and we love volunteers and we appreciate them. Perfect. Yeah, I think Michael can round up a, a few able bodied young men to get out there and, and pick up some trash and fix some divots so uh, he's been a great resource and has a great connection to the golfing community here in Wichita. Anything else on the round report? All right, no continuation of prior business. Uh, so we'll go to the pros. Uh, first one I see is Colin. Well, as everybody probably already knows, we're, we're having a uh, fantastic week this week with uh, really good weather and um, at, at all the golf courses, and uh, that's good to see. Um, we're also getting ready for Hook a Kid on Golf coming up here soon, trying to get the equipment in for that, uh, getting a few people hired, and um, but it looks like we're, we're on track to have a really good month again. So, thanks. Uh, Scott. Kind of follow Collins' lead. Um, season's kind of ramping up. I think we've averaged somewhere around 150, 160 players a day this week, not counting the high school, including the high schools. Senior league registration that we started um, earlier this, this month, um, I think. We're going to probably have somewhere around 80 senior league participants. We have our ladies day has a kind of a meet and greet on Sunday. Our PGA junior league registration is open and have six, four to six kids already signed up there. Um, men's club will start uh, the weekend after the Shamrock, which the Shamrock is sold out at 35 teams, but which is the number of carts that we have available for them. So hopefully the weather holds and we can Pull off a shamrock of 144 players on Saturday, the 12th of March. Also, kind of prepping and getting ready for the season. Um, booking some uh, graduation parties in May. Still continuing, believe it or not, still booking events for of all months that we don't need them is in June. But things are really progressing. I think you know everybody's kind of overwhelmed at this point, but you know. We can't complain when traffic is coming in and out of door every day. Excellent. Steve? Uh, yeah, we've been working hard on trying to, um, after the decision was made, is starting to get some staff hired. Um, I've had a lot of um, input from golfers and potential employees um, now that there's been a decision that want to come on board. So we are. Um, starting to get those applications in and get them both sent to HR so we can move forward with those. Um, also trying to uh, fulfill all my orders for my pro shop. I uh, had a bunch of stuff on hold um, moving forward with that. So we're really trying to get a lot of merchandise in to get the pro shop stocked up and looking good um, where we haven't had it in the past few years and working on trying to finish up here before spring totally hits um, golf cart maintenance oil changes uh we got the seats done and we're going to do some cleaning of the carts just to get those ready for the season other than that yeah this week kind of it is pretty good um, a lot of golfers which was nice I mean, we're still kind of short staff but uh, luckily um, we're happy to have them and it could change at any point so things are starting off really well cool, cool. ron i know we heard from you under the project updates but if you have anything else 
Uh, no, I don't. Uh, not really. So just, yeah, say I'll kind of reiterate. Yeah, after the decision was made by council Monday, uh, we have a clear direction what our future is and, and uh, we're ready to roll and, and make the best of it. Cool. Uh, President's update, I'll got to congratulate Colin for winning the uh, PGA Player Development Award uh, recently. Congrats on that. Uh, well deserved. Thank you. And uh, Scott also uh, won the uh, award for um, um, best merchandiser in Kansas too, so or in the Kansas chapter. Congrats on that, Scott. Um, felt like I had something else, but I can't remember it. Um, is there any questions from the media that's joining us today? Cool. <laughs> they did uh, left us. There's still there. Oh, yeah, they're still uh, there. As long as uh, rounds and revenue is, is up, y'all can write whatever you want. Uh, if there's nothing else, we can adjourn. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.